Hello and welcome to another Q&A video. So this question was submitted by McClinton Justin on GitHub and the question is, how to use P5 or processing as a background for a website? Okay, so this is a very broad question because this can mean a lot of things. Like, well, what are you, what's your P5JS or process the thing doing? And what is your website? So I'm gonna boil this down to a specific scenario and then as I show you a demonstration of this scenario that I'm thinking in my head, I'll talk about other possible scenarios that might fit into this and other avenues that you might think about kind of combining a animated sketch or dynamic JavaScript thing with a quote unquote website. Um, so I have a website that I made. It's about unicorns and rainbows. I, I found an image of a unicorn on the internet and I wrote a little header and then I pulled a quote from Wikipedia. So, this, so on the one hand, here's one scenario. You have a website that you've made. Perhaps it's your blog, perhaps it's your own website. However you made it, ultimately it's just sitting there and it's a page of content and that content is you know, kind of hard-coded or written content perhaps via whatever mechanism you're using. And you can see where I have that here, I have this just written into an HTML file, index.html. Now if this is, has a reference to P5 libraries in it as well, but it just has like the header, a paragraph with an image in it, and a paragraph with like a quote from Wikipedia. So let's just say here's here's one po possible scenario. What if you what you want what 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 you want is to have this website that you could suddenly draw over it, so you could kind of like annotate it, and you could imagine this eventually becoming something like a Chrome extension, which any page that you're on, you could press a button. And through this like Chrome extension, what is a Chrome extension you might be asking? I, I, that's okay if you're asking that. But the idea of a layer on top of any website that you're browsing to augment that experience. So, and I'm gonna do that in a future video for sure. But let's just kind of make it work with the website of my own making here. So what I'm gonna do is I have a P5 sketch and I'm gonna say create canvas. And I'm gonna just say create canvas 400 by 400. Um, and then I'm gonna say background zero, just so we see it there. So what happened? This adds a canvas to the bottom. So on the one hand, I'm kind of combining some JavaScript code with some pre-written HTML code, and by default, P5 will just place that canvas at the bottom. So another thing that I could do here is I could say, well, I could use the DOM library, and I could store a reference to the canvas in a variable, And I could then use something called absolute positioning. And I could say position that canvas at 0, 0. So now you can see, ah, the canvas is there, but it's covering, over, covering the page. Well, this, is, this might be what you want. It might not be what you want. But let's say that's not what you want. Well, a trick to keeping track of the order of elements, kind of the layers of elements, is to use a CSS property known as z-index. Z index kind of like the the like uh, the Z axis like are things in front or behind. So I am going to now say canvas dot style Z index, and I'm going to give it a Z index of negative one because probably all the other things just have a default Z index of zero. I think that's the case. So now you can see it's sitting behind the page. Now because it's black, I can't see the text, so I'm going to say 220. Just to give it, you can see, um, let's, let's make it 175. You can see there's the canvas. Now, what if I want the canvas to kind of be the background of the entire page? So instead of saying 400 by 400, I can say window width, I think this is right, window height. These are built-in variables in P5 that dynamically detect the width and height of that browser page and, um, and create the canvas at that size. So you can see, there we go. Now one thing you'll notice if I resize, it's not actually changing. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to fix that in a second. But let's at least add some sort of animation. Um, uh, I wish, uh, let's say, uh, just because what I was doing in a previous video is I'm going to uh, connect to my microphone. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, uh, oh, I don't have the sound library. Uh, I, this is, uh, I'm going to connect to the microphone and I'm going to say mic.start and now I'm just going to uh, give me a volume which is uh, mic.getlevel and I'm going to draw an ellipse 
in the center of the canvas with a, wi uh, a, a size of volume times 100. <laughs> so let's see if this works. Uh, and I, I know that I'm getting an error because this is the error I'm getting because I didn't actually import the sound library. So I'm going to uh, add p5sound.js here. And now you should see, okay, so now I have a web page that's responding to my voice kind of with this like canvas in the background. And just to be clear about this, um, I'm going to multiply it by, you know, like 500. I'm going to multiply it actually by uh, the width of the window. So now we can see that this circle is always going to be there behind the page. Now, what I want to do is as I resize the browser, right, I want that circle to always sort of stay in the center and the canvas to resize itself. So here is where I need to focus on a particular event. What I want to do is add an event, and that event is window resized, I think. I think that's the event. So P5 has a global function you can write, just like you can write a global mouse press function for whenever a mouse clicks anywhere on the page. Um, let's just see. I'm going to just console log the word resize to see if this is correct. Yeah, so you can see that whenever I change the size of the window, this particular um, this, this particular uh, event is being triggered. So what I can do actually in here is I can call a P5 function called resize canvas. Resize canvas will recreate that same canvas with a new window width and window height. So I can give it this sort of currently updated window width and window height. I think this is correct. And I'm going to do this. And you can see it's continuing to work. So now I have this idea of a P5 sketch. And the reason why the thing about it is a P5 sketch isn't just a canvas, right? You can do so much. A P5 sketch is a sketch that allows you to control the behavior of a web page in a much more generic sense. So I could be manipulating the DOM elements and moving that unicorn picture around and doing so much more. But now at least you see this idea of the canvas, a P5 canvas as the background um, of a particular uh, sketch and being able to um, manip have that canvas always resize and adjust itself um, as, the, as the browser is being manipulated. So now, there's a couple more things that I want to add to this. In a, so there's another scenario that might be relevant to you. For example, what if what I want to do, and I don't know if this is going to, I'm going to comment out the mic stuff and the ellipse, and I'm actually going to put background in setup, and I'm going to say if mouse pre oh if mouse is pressed i want to draw a line from p mouse x to p and p mouse y to mouse x and mouse y if you're wondering what p mouse x and p mouse y are they're the previous mouse position why am i doing this is because what i want is to be able to do this so this is something you might think about which is sort of like this ability to annotate a page. Now, in this case, remember I spent all this effort like putting the canvas behind, right? Because if I don't call this Z index thing, then the canvas is actually in front of all that content. However, there's no, and even if, if I do this, however, you can see there's, um, it actually works. So a canvas by default is actually transparent. So you only have this issue is if you want to draw a background. And in fact, I, th I thought I was going to have to do this, but um, I, I'll show you. I could add mouse pressed and add uh, the clear function here. So the clear function here is a function that clears the canvas, leaving it transparent. So in other words, I could do something like this where it's like, um, you know, oh, I'm going to add a little smiley onto the unicorn and give it like some wings and, uh, uh, oh, and then, oh, mouse press clears it. I didn't even realize that. So I could instead say like key pressed or something because uh, I want to be able to draw. Anyway, you get the point. I want to like uh, augment this uh, unicorn by giving it, I don't know what I'm drawing now. And then I could hit the space bar and I could clear it. So this is a possible, these are a couple possible creative applications of combining canvas and drawing with existing web content. What is that existing web content? Is it a page you've made? Is it something on your blog? Is it, some, is it like a newspaper website and through a Chrome extension you're going to modify? There's a lot of possibilities here that I'll hopefully show you in future videos. But hopefully this video, I've at least shown you some tricks for how to use P5.js 
as a background for a web page. And by that I really mean a canvas sitting there as the background of the web page. Okay, um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can ask your questions in the comments or ask me at Schiffman on Twitter and I will see you in a future video. Thanks.